loss of sense of smell and taste. Yeah, it's going on, right? A lot of it's been going on. And uh, I've been doing some research on it since so many have been asking, and I haven't lost my smell or taste. My family members haven't really lost their smell and taste. In fact, our youngest one, when he uh, struggled with this, actually, he did lose his smell and taste for a bit, but he got it back probably, I don't know, a week or two? Didn't take them that long. But I know some of you have been struggling for quite some time, and uh, I know from what I'm hearing anyway that it can be pretty, pretty problematic. And if you're wondering what's going on with my eye, everything's fine. I just got some solvent in there. I got a cleaner in there, and it's, it's a bit irritated, but it should be fine by about a week or so. So, but all's good. I can see just fine. It doesn't hurt, just red. So, smell, taste, what's going on? Let's start with the most obvious. That's this paper right here, okay? What is this paper saying? So the title of this paper, should you wanna look it up, is intranasal zinc level relationship to, you can't say the word, uh, loss of smell and type one interferon response. This is a proposal, okay? This does not mean that is uh, set in stone. This stuff is, this is theoretical. But anytime you understand the mechanisms of action, you can step back. I talk about this all the time. That's why pathways are, you know, I do pathways stuff with strategy and I teach doctors this all the time. But if you understand how genes work and the tools that are needed for these genes to function, then you know how to restore those genes. And you also, if you look at what interferes with these genes in terms of the environment, like viruses, what makes them work harder or slower, then you also understand some things. So why would you have a loss of smell and taste after a viral infection? Well, your immune system uses a lot of zinc, a lot of zinc. In fact, I didn't know this, but iron is the number one mineral storage in your body. Um, and number two is zinc, okay? So number one, iron, two is zinc. That's pretty impressive. And when your immune system fires, you use up a ton of zinc, and then the zinc levels get redistributed based upon the most important areas of the body. So taste and smell, sorry, not so important. Your body's gonna pull that zinc out of there and it's gonna use it and redistribute it in other areas to protect you, okay? So that's a self-defense mechanism. So for example, pregnant ladies, if you are pregnant, and you are not consuming sufficient calcium, that baby needs calcium to grow. And so they're, they're growing bones, right? And other things. So if, if you don't have sufficient calcium coming in, your body is going to be losing calcium from your own bones to reallocate that and distribute it to the developing baby. So osteopenia uh, is potential consequence of being pregnant. So having a viral infection loss of smell and taste is a consequence of a zinc deficiency because the zinc is redistributed to other tissues where the zinc is more important and a dirty gene is involved. So I just learned this tonight. So we have proposed that the local drop in nasal zinc levels may induce transient loss of smell, anosmia or anosmia, that the local drop in nasal zinc may induce, okay, reading it again, sorry. Slow down. The local drop in nasal zinc levels may induce transient anosmia due to decreased function of zinc dependent enzymes, specifically carbonic anhydrase, which maintains smell and taste function. Okay, so that is pretty key. So car carbonic anhydrase is a zinc dependent gene that requires, that, that is needed for smell and taste. So if you don't have sufficient zinc, the carbonic anhydrase enzyme cannot function. If it cannot function, it cannot maintain its job to support your taste and smell. So support healthy zinc levels with a zinc lozenge. Some of you are taking zinc tablets. Zinc tablets are worthless. If you go into a manufacturing facility and you hear how they're making tablets, like these one a day Flintstone pills, or these tablets that are whole food tablets, 
but they're they're hard. They're really hard. It sounds like jackhammers, and they're, there's high heat as well. So the high heat and the high pounding and the high pressure, you don't have teeth in your stomach, and a lot of you don't have sufficient stomach acid. So you are not going to be getting the nutrients out of these tablets. The only tablets that we have at Seeking Health are lozenges, chewables, sustained release. I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. So this is what our zinc chewable, well, lozenge looks like. And it's a zinc lozenge on purpose. So what you want to do is you put it in your mouth. I'm not going to do it now, but you put it in your mouth. I like to bite it once, just one time. And then you slowly let it dissolve. And that way it gets the zinc all around your mouth. Okay. So if you're struggling with a sore throat, zinc lozenge as well, three, four, five times a day can be useful. And I know some of you are very, very intolerant to zinc. You get nauseated and feel really queasy. The zinc lozenge seems to be doing really well. I'm all, I'm with you. I get queasy with zinc uh, capsules, but with these zinc lozenges, I do way better. If you have it with food, if you eat a meal before or some type of snack before, you're going to do way better with the zinc lozenge. But even with the zinc lozenge, away from food, I've experimented and I've given it to my boys too. We don't tend to get really nauseated, but everyone's different. So zinc lozenges to support the carbonic anhydrase enzyme, which is a zinc dependent enzyme, which supports the function of taste and smell. And you lose, use a lot of zinc during viral infections because your immune system uses a ton of it. Okay, now are we done? No. This paper, this was interesting. Intranasal vitamin A uh, is beneficial in post-infectious olfactory loss. This paper was published in 2017. They're actually doing a study in England right now where they are using vitamin A drops in the nose for loss of sense of, of smell and taste. Well, loss of sense of smell specifically. Now, Zinc, they also did a study with putting zinc in the nose. That's not a good idea. Um, that's the problem. Actually, let me talk about zinc for a second. Too much zinc can also contribute to loss of smell and taste. So I, I, I'm throwing that in there. I probably just confused the heck out of you. But it, it's not, don't think that more is better. There's, there's, it's a bell-shaped curve. You want to be right at the top for the optimal zinc levels. So you know, you don't want to be taking too much. So I would be looking at no more than, you know, 45 milligrams a day. These are 15 milligram uh, lozenges, I believe. Yes, 15 milligram lozenges. And you'd be taking uh, one in the morning, one in the afternoon, one in the evening, and uh, taking your multivitamin with some copper in there too, so you can get some copper balance. Um, so back to vitamin A. So this study looked at using vitamin A inside the nose for for loss of smell in individuals. And what they found was um, they did this, they did 10,000 IUs for two months. So they put basically, uh, as, a, as a give you an idea, this is 10,000 10, IUs is two drops. So 5,000 IUs of this vitamin A drop is two drops um, would make 10,000 IUs, okay? So 5,000 IUs per drop would be two drops and the researchers did two drops for eight weeks, um, applied topically at the head back position. Hopefully I don't have any boogers in my nose. So the head back position, they put two drops, two drops, and then they, you know, that acted locally in the nose, but that's all they did. And I was like, well, why wouldn't they also take it orally, right? So I would be considering taking the vitamin A drops orally and to support the vitamin A. And I don't know the mechanism of action like I do with the zinc. Um, I didn't, I should have read about it, but didn't this video, I also can't get too long. What did they find out? 37% uh, 30 of all post-infectious patients treated with the vitamin A exhibited clinical improvement, whereas only 23% in controls. So this was a significant result with the P result of 0.03. Okay. Um, and also, uh, vitamin A produced significantly greater improvement compared with training alone. So, 
Vitamin A, intranasal vitamin A at a dose of 10,000 IUs per day for two months may be useful in the treatment of post-infectious olfactory loss. Okay, so I'll talk with your doctor about using vitamin A uh, intranasally um, for, you know, for supporting a loss of, of smell. So again, you head back position, two drops, two drops, and then, uh, but I would also be uh, just looking at taking it orally. So taking two drops orally of this a day to get the vitamin A because vitamin A is fat soluble and it will get into your nose, okay? So that is a good thing to consider. So two drops a day of vitamin A drops and I would be looking at one to three uh, lozenges a day of zinc lozenges. And there was, a, there was a lady who commented, I think it was this week, it's all a blur now, but she said that she went to her naturopathic physician and for her loss of smell and taste, and she used 10,000 IUs of vitamin A. Doctor probably found the same paper that I'm reading now, along with zinc lozenges. I think she, you know, she probably said around 45 milligrams to 60 milligrams of zinc a day. So that's three to four lozenges of optimal zinc a day. So, and she's probably listening to this right now. And if you are, thank you, because you spurn me to look for this because look, this is theoretical. I've not personally experienced it. We have not had loss of, of taste or smell in my home. Um, that was long-term, so I wasn't like scrambling to resolve it. Usually my family uh, makes me uh, rush to fix things. Um, but uh, in this case, we resolved it pretty quickly, probably because we gave a lot of zinc to Theo when he was sick, okay? So you can get zinc lozenges at seekinghealth.com and you can get the vitamin A drops at seekinghealth.com. Now this stuff, shake it and the vitamin A is messy. Um, so I'm gonna open it now. And when you open the, the dropper, uh, slide the dropper alongside the bottle before you pull it out. Okay, and it is this color. It's brown color because it's in a sunflower phospholipid base. It's naturally brown, okay? And it tastes good. Your kids will have no problems taking this. Pregnant ladies, one drop. One drop a day for you. It's actually really good. <laughs> wow. Um, and keep it away from your kids because they might like the taste too much. So keep it up high away from the kids. Pregnant ladies, one drop a day. Breastfeeding ladies, you can take two drops, 10,000 I use a day. Um, and with the zinc, uh, breastfeeding folks, just fine, well, ladies. And uh, kids ages four and above, if you have kids younger than four, talk with your healthcare professional about using zinc lozenges. lozenges. And my mouth is wet now. You can also cut these in half if needed. Okay, hope that serves you. Pregnancy, I don't know the RDA safety dose for pregnancy. You can look that up. Um, but basically, you could, I know you could take one of those a day for pregnancy, or you could be using our optimal prenatal, um, which has quite a bit of zinc in there as well. Hope this serves you. Comment below if you've had struggling with uh, loss of uh, smell and taste, and if you've resolved it, how long did it take? What tricks did you use? What essential oils did you use? Other uh, nutrients, what have you? Um, smelling salts, who knows? Um, and if you've tried using our vitamin A drops and our zinc and it's helped you, go ahead and share that below as well. So always here, always researching and uh, trying to help you out. Take care.